Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Discovery. This is the series where I head on out into the galaxy to find the unusual, the spectacular and the beautiful. On today's episode, I continue my journey on towards the center of the galaxy whilst moving below the galactic plane. I come across a few neutron stars and a black hole and ultimately end up threatening the safety of my ship. I've said it many times before, but I always seem to find myself getting distracted when I head out on any expedition. Sometimes that involves me going towards a nebula, sometimes towards a certain star system, but whatever the reason, it always seems to inevitably involve me moving away from my planned course. Today what happened is at the last minute I decided to start moving down below the galactic plane. Now this is something I haven't done for a very long time and I'm doing this because the view down here is very, very unusual. And that's because you get to see the entire galaxy spread out beneath you, or above you I guess, depending on your perspective. Now you might have noticed the way that star jumped in in front of me. It more or less instantly appeared rather than me zooming up on top of it. And the reason for that is because this is a supermassive star. Whilst there's certainly plenty of these out there, it's not always all that common to come across them. And here you can get an idea of just how large the star actually is. I'm around 2,500 light seconds away from it, or five times the distance of the Earth from our Sun. Now Earth is just over 500 light seconds away from Sol, which is a little bit further than this planet here. That one was just over 300 light seconds, and it's no wonder that all the planets here are baked to a crisp. But it's always worthwhile going up and having a look, because the view from these places is usually quite interesting indeed. Now if you're still in the inhabited bubble, there's a place quite nearby, and you may recognize the name. There's a supermassive star there, perhaps one of the largest in fact. It's called Betelgeuse. There are a number of other pronunciations of course of that star, each of them equally valid. Now if you happen to go out to that star system, you'll find there a planet that you can land on, and it's well within the fuel scoop zone of the star, and it's a spectacular view indeed. However, supermassive stars are not the only way to appreciate suns. Sometimes you come across binary star systems, and other times, like this particular case, you come across trinary star systems. So, two different types of stars here, three stars in total. And they really have a wonderful contrast with each other, the yellow of the star in front, and the red of the star behind. Now if you'd like to see a view very similar to this one, but you're still in inhabited space, then you can head to the system LHS 347, where you'll find a, a binary star system that looks very much like this one. And there you'll also find a space station called VO Doc, which happens to orbit extremely close to the two suns. Now whenever anyone goes on a long distance expedition, one thing they're always sure to take care of is their ship's condition. They need to keep their modules in tip-top condition, and they need to keep their ship's hull in tip-top condition. Now the modules can currently be repaired with an auto-filled repair unit, but the hull currently cannot, at least until the next update. Now generally speaking, exploration is a very peaceful affair, but occasionally there are a few things you need to watch out for. And one of those is neutron stars. Now if you accidentally fly into the exclusion zone here, it's not likely it will destroy your ship, but what will happen is that you will take a little bit of damage, and if you continue making mistakes like that, then this sort of damage will mount up. Far riskier though, is the process of flying into the ejection cone here. You can use this to boost your jump drive of course, but more often than not, that can end in failure if you're not particularly careful. Regardless of any inherent danger here though, no matter how minor that may actually be, one thing that cannot be denied is just how beautiful these places actually look. In fact, it's possible to find entire fields of neutron stars, and this is one of the places where many people collect their discovery data and progress their exploration rank. Now here, I come across a rather unexpected discovery. This is the sort of thing I normally keep an eye out for. In fact, I'm sure to check the uh, system maps to try and find planets that are this close together. But on this occasion, it happened, like I say, unexpectedly. I was flying out to check what I thought to be a very small world, a potato-like world. And in fact, I did find that. But what I didn't expect was to see a twin world orbiting quite this close. 
It's quite likely then that some people are going to be very quick to point out that an orbit like this is actually impossible, or improbable, let's say, and that's due to the Roche limit. When the worlds get within a certain distance of each other, then the gravitational forces can cause them to rip each other apart if they get too close. However, I'm not too sure on the specifics of this particular limit, so I've got to admit I've no idea how it would actually affect worlds as small as these ones. So then, generally speaking, there's two types of landable bodies that I actually look out for. One is the small potato type worlds, because these can have more remarkable features on them. The other are ice worlds, but not any old ice world, ice worlds with deep chasms and ravines on them. Fortunately then, you can make out these from the system map when you first jump into a star system, a quick blast of the discovery scanner, and then check out the system map, and you should be able to see any ice world that has any deep canyons on it, as they will be marked on the particular planetary map. And whilst that map isn't that high resolution, because you can't zoom into it without flying up close, it's often enough to let you know whether or not you want to go up and actually have a look. On well, this particular leg of the journey, I caused myself a lot more harm than good. Upon jumping to this system, I was at 42% hull, and you can see that now I'm down to 41%. Crashing into the exclusion zone of the black hole happened because, rather foolishly, I was all tabbed outside of the game during the hyperspace transition, and it just so happened that on this particular case, I was heading into a system with a black hole. What happened to the other 60% of the hull then? Well, you remember that ice planet from the previous scene? Well, I was in the external camera mode capturing some footage, and I just so happened to spectacularly crash the ship straight into a cliff. Rather unfortunate to be honest, because I'm still only on the very early legs of the journey, and got a long way to go yet. So, whilst black holes in the game uh, are still missing things such as accretion disks, but that's something that will hopefully uh, come one day, they still can look rather spectacular due to the lensing effect that they cause. And this can be most readily apparent when you're flying right near the exclusion zone in regular flight mode and then go into supercruise. We're going to see that in just a moment. Being so close to a black hole as this causes all manner of visual distortions, mainly because you're right inside the rather large gravity well. Of course, there are other effects that Frontier can add into the game eventually surrounding black holes, and it's something I'm looking forward to, along with some gameplay mechanics to come with it. So, all in all then, it's been a rather nice journey. I'm going to continue onwards and try and get as low as I can below the galactic plane. For now though, I'm going to settle for the view that I've got right here. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.